The Southeastern Pennsylvania Transportation Authority, or SEPTA for short, is the sixth largest transit agency in the U.S., serving the sixth largest city, Philadelphia, with coverage for up to 4 million people. SEPTA runs with five modes of transportation, buses, trackless trolleys, heavy rail, light rail, and regional commuter rail. SEPTA offers diverse options for commuters, tourists, and transit enthusiasts like myself to enjoy, covering five counties in southeastern Pennsylvania as well as Newcastle County, Delaware, and Mercer County, New Jersey, with 196 routes, nearly 500 miles of track, and 290 active stations. As of the release of this video, I have set foot at them all. It's now time for your friendly neighborhood train wizard to give you the honest tour you've been waiting for. Let's start with a ride on the bus. SEPTA has top-notch reliability. Your next bus is scheduled to come soon. You walk to the bus stop with five minutes to spare. The first bus is six minutes early and passes you right by before you get to the stop. Damn. The next bus doesn't even exist because there is an operator shortage, usually shown on Transit View on the SEPTA app as a bus sitting at 15th and Market running 16 hours late. The bus after that is 10 minutes late and crowded. After all that waiting and the following stop and go, you now have to connect to the train that runs once every two hours, except you get there just two minutes after missing the train. It's a chain reaction. Shortages and delays aside though, SEPTA has the schedule rigged to miss transfers by a couple minutes or it's a simultaneous meeting where the only way to make it is to run like a madman, dart through traffic or scale the stairs three steps at a time. You guys know what happened to me last time I rushed for transit. I snapped my humerus in half like a piece of celery. See this video for details. It ain't worth it. Once upon a time, SEPTA had a diverse array of diesel vehicles that had real character. Now we have a bunch of hybrids that barely work properly. The software on the new 3000 series Excelsior hybrid buses have more bugs than the Florida backyard. Sometimes a stop request cord won't work. The Proterra battery powered baked potatoes of South Philadelphia got junked and one of them simply burst into flames. Close to brand new. So much for zero emissions. Meanwhile, have you heard of the trackless trolley's identity crisis? When it turns, you hear this. Caution. If you call it a bus in a transit fan forum, you will be torn apart like a cheesesteak in the sports lounge during the Super Bowl. Next, we have the amazing Broad Street Line, providing rapid transit up and down Broad Street with express train speeds that are unmatched by most of the subways in the United States. You want to get comfortable though? You'll have to do it twice, because no matter how empty the train is, an overly friendly passenger with a lit black and mild and a can of steel reserve will find you and sit right next to you, knowing they haven't showered in a month and their clothes have enough dust to form a small planet. Even if you take the single seaters or the corner seats, someone will find you and contaminate your air. They'll walk between cars and take a huge puff of that synthetic jazz cabbage and blow it right into your face. If you're caught on the line during school dismissal, you might want to duck because the students could start throwing glass in a pop-up Philly food fight. A half-empty bottle of Calypso could be a projectile. You're on your way to connect to regional rail. Which one will you get on? The Matrix is watching you like a hawk as you make a decision. After you get on, there will be a surprise signaling issue, trapping you in the tunnel for 10 minutes. The other train will have beat you to your destination. Once you get moving, your commute is already destroyed. Leave a half an hour early. If computers have taught me anything, it's that the more you're in a hurry, the slower technology operates. Your Broad Street subway train will crawl slowly around the yard, giving you a scenic view of the train sitting at Fern Rock Yard, and also a scenic view of your regional rail train leaving while you watch helplessly. And now you have to explain to your boss as they tap their watch and wag their index finger in your face once you get to work talking about, you need a car, bro. Don't let the express train's top speed fool you. Your commute will get violated. On time equals late. As we continue our honest tour of the Broad Street Line, let's talk about how stations are accessible and ever so easy to navigate. 
You just got off the 56 bus and you're on your way into the subway. Let me tell you about why this is an exit only. Keep in mind this is Sunday. There is no indication that anything is closed. The gate is always unlocked, so anybody can go down and get on the train they want. But, oh wait. Take a look at the turnstiles and how the entrance is completely gated and locked. There is absolutely no way to get on the train. Reminder, there is no sign that says it is exit only. So if you want to get on the train, you will have to go across this intersection to the entrance on that side, which is the only one that's open. Here we have a recent tweet from a frustrated passenger in a similar dilemma, wondering where the open exit is or if the station is closed altogether. SEPTA's reply was this. Dear loyal SEPTA customer, guess which entrance we left open in a two block radius? There is only one. A sign? Oh, you wanted a sign? Oh, we don't care about you. Elderly or disabled? Go play in traffic. Walk out of your way into dead ends, possibly getting you cornered. Definitely causing you to miss the smoke lounge, I mean train. We will do nothing until everyone chooses to drive cars just to get basic reliability and to escape our booby traps. But that will congest our roads and then we'll cry, Low ridership! And boom, your neighborhood just became a transit void because of service cuts. Are you enjoying this feedback loop? And next time you visit, we will probably rename the southernmost station on our line after some pyramid scheme company you never heard of. Thank you for writing SEPTA. The Market Frankfurt line is the most budget-friendly hotel in the city, except when it's not. Room service usually shows up at 69th Street or Frankfurt to tell you your room is being transferred to the other platform. You will fail your drug test by osmosis if you ride the Market Frankfurt line. There are more smokers on the train than there are commuters. No matter which car you get on, what time of day or night or where you sit, you will be within six feet of someone who's offensive to one of your senses, injecting snake venom and smoking plastic wig hair. You also run the risk of getting clobbered in the head if you take that wonderful front or rear window window seat because that was someone's hotel reservation with a view. You might have heard the song, You Can't Get to Heaven on the Market Frankfurt L, but if you want to go through hell, definitely take the L. The law, there is no law, and if there is, they're too busy chasing rail fans and photographers off the property for fear of terrorism. You already know you can't be down here taking pictures. Meanwhile, someone gets violated three ways by a zombie on board, then set on fire. SEPTA got what they paid for. The M4 cars from 1996 are worth maybe a buck fifty apiece and break down more than a McDonald's ice cream machine. Overnight, everything you see on the trains is now compacted into a 40-foot bus. Maybe a 60-footer if you're lucky. People smoke, drink, inject, snort, pick fights, and sleep in their juices on the shuttle buses. If you made it home after riding the bus between midnight and 5 a.m., especially considering how many connecting night owl routes were cut over time and continue to be cut, Jesus took the wheel for you. Now let's take a tour of the wonderful trolley network, or what's left of it. We have several routes that have had temporary shuttle bus service for over 30 years and counting, including the 23. They left the tracks in the street to lead you on. Meanwhile, on the active lines, people are mad because the trolleys can't steer around their double park Nissan Altima and now they have to interrupt their quickie session to move their car. What an inconvenience. Then you got drivers challenging the trolley only to find out that light rail ain't all that light. And other drivers think the 40th Street portal is for them. Now let's talk about how much the Media and Sharon Hill lines got disrespected. Their upgraded grade crossings are basically stop signs for trolleys, allowing cars priority until the trolley is at a complete stop, after which point the light will turn red and then, only then does the trolley get the right of way. The polar opposite of every railroad crossing ever. Since people don't want to observe common sense in the track area, transit has to slow down. Other than that, SEPTA's trolleys are actually quite fun. 
Let's now head over to the Norristown High Speed Line, Route 100, the PNW, or what I like to call the Norristown So-So Speed Line. There are no more expresses or limiteds. All trains run local on a stop request basis every half an hour except during the rush, and the speed limits have gotten more and more restricted. Once upon a time, trains went up to 90 miles an hour. Now it's barely pushing 40. Where's the fun in that? Now commuters can't get their daily adrenaline fix. They just gotta ride with their poker faces. Have you been hoping and dreaming to ride the long-awaited King of Prussia extension? That project just got shelved like Wheezy from Toy Story 2. Once again, you have been strung along. You will have to deal with the traffic and pedestrian hell in that retail and suburban sprawl for years to come. Your great-grandkids will have their driver's licenses before King of Prussia is served by rail. Finally, let's have some honest fun on the regional rail network. This is my favorite mode of transit. You can use regional rail to get some nice scenes of the greater Philadelphia metro area and cross some historical and beautiful bridges and see the landscapes. You get to access several suburbs and satellite cities in the region such as Trenton, Wilmington, and Norristown, passing all the rush hour traffic on the nightmare expressways out of Center City. But God help you if nature calls. Except as regional rail trains do not have bathrooms like every other commuter rail line around us. So if you're riding from Newark to Doylestown and your bladder pressure reaches the Mariana Trenches and explodes, that's a personal problem and now your train is out of service. And many of the beautiful stations in the outlying areas are closed before brunch and on weekends, so no bathroom or climate control for you. Oh, and the next train might be two hours out. The current system is set that all lines radiate into Center City, making a station stop that is probably more horrifying than all the other modes in this video combined. Suburban Station. This station was once an honorable transit hub, now it's become the Center City Backrooms, and second after Frankfurt Transportation Center in crime rates. There are a lot of corners where you'll see something you probably wish you didn't see, along with dead ends. I hated going into Suburban Station between 2020 and 2021 because out of over two dozen entrances, only one was open, maybe two during peak hours. I've done a lot of walking through concourses that ended at a locked door or gate, requiring me to walk hundreds of feet back and out of my way and even outside in the elements. I've missed trains this way and I've encountered a lot of undesirable human activity. Jefferson Station was just as much of a fire trap and a hall of horrors after hours during the peak of the pandemic, but it has since opened up. Jefferson Station still seems so gray these days, even with the colorful mosaic meant for Market East Station, representing the optimism that used to be upstairs. At the surface level, outside of Fashion District, East Market Street, especially after sunset, is a ghost town of broken dreams and disappointment. It wasn't like that in the gallery generation. Meanwhile, 30th Street Station is holding up nicely and it's not as bad by comparison. There's Amtrak, New Jersey Transit, and a heavy nationwide tourist and traveler presence sharing that station, so they must keep 30th Street Station looking as good as it does. Let's not forget to take a tour of some nice Zone 1 stations that you'll love to visit, such as North Philadelphia. The resurfacing art on the walls draws tourists from around the world, and the surrounding area is a must-see, and it's even nicer at night. Fern Rock is a station that shows just what the bad side of the tracks is. There's no bad side, it's just unreasonably blocked. Since there's no access to the east side of the namesake neighborhood, no bridge, no crossing, nothing, residents often cross the tracks illegally to get to the station, avoiding the mile-long, multi-block walk that they'd have to make around the yard that would add more than 15 minutes and an extra workout to your commute. An extension from the bridge, or crossing behind the elevator at track zero, and some stairs accessing the neighborhood could solve that and boost ridership. But it's too much like right, except a recently built a taller fence. That solved everything. Unfortunately, in this day and age, the regional rail system is just a breadcrumb of what the heyday of traction once offered for the region. If you want to take regional rail to such magical destinations as Valley Forge, Pottstown, Newtown, Westchester, Reading, or Allentown, you'll need a time machine, and physics doesn't allow for backwards time travel, so enjoy the photos. Respect your elders too, for they may be transit historians full of stories about such trains and stations. Nowadays, most of Pennsylvania outside of the five counties served by SEPTA is an archipelago of 
of transit islands in the void, connected only by car or very, 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 very limited coach bus service that gets cut more than my fingers when I worked at the hardware store. Meanwhile, Septa and Mark came so close at Newark, Delaware and Perryville, Maryland, respectively, but they just barely reach, thus disconnecting the Philly and Baltimore, Washington's transit coverage areas from each other. Let's talk about the fare. Most major transit systems in these United States have passes of one day, seven days, and 30 days, with no ride caps or calendars on their passes. That could be SEPTA, but that's too easy. SEPTA locks its weekly passes to a Monday through Sunday calendar week and monthly by the calendar month. That can be a ripoff. For example, if you were a tourist visiting for seven days, starting after a Tuesday, you will pay for Monday's unused travel and add a day pass for the following Monday. You cannot buy weekly passes on Wednesdays. On Thursday, you can buy next week's weekly pass, and that won't be valid until Monday. Instead, you have to buy seven day passes or use your refillable travel wallet frugally. To make matters worse, SEPTA's passes are not unlimited anymore. They used to be until they upgraded to key cars in 2017, the transit tech equivalent of getting a brand new PlayStation 2 in 2023. Today, you only get 8 rides to a day pass, 10 if you get the Independence Pass which works on regional rail, 56 rides to all weekly passes, and 240 rides to all monthly passes. If you use the rides up before the time is up, like I have often, you're stuck using your travel wallet balance until the calendar tells you that you can get another one. Way to give any frequent traveler, joyrider, or tourist that dreaded low balance anxiety. Thanks for taking my honest tour. In a generation where younger travelers want to advocate for better transit, SEPTA is plagued with runaway problems that ruin it for us and for travelers visiting Philly. Everyone would just rather drive, put up with traffic jams and road rage, and deal with the Philadelphia Parking Authority, a direct spawn of Satan, just because a car is always more pleasant, private, free, and reliable versus sharing a vehicle with someone who abuses the law and nobody does anything about it. The car is treated as the end-all be-all mode to replace transit for good. If your car breaks down and you need to repair it, taking SEPTA shouldn't be a miserable experience that has you crying for your car and losing your will to live. Transit is meant to be a supplement, not an afterthought. Wouldn't it be better to be able to sit comfortably and safely on SEPTA, reading your favorite book or texting your friends without having to watch the road? I'm talking all modes, not just regional rail. Sure, you're probably thinking to yourself, I can just listen to an ebook while driving my car. But maybe I'm just an old soul who still likes books. Point is, people don't deserve to deal with the secondhand smoke or civil unrest. This is the mess that I have to go through just to get to work, see people, and get content for my channel. This is what your friends and loved ones go through to get to work every day. A lot of riders cannot afford the fuel and other expenses a car brings, and in some places, a car is simply inconvenient. We are not gluttons for punishment by choosing or even preferring SEPTA. I think SEPTA can do much, much better. And you guys watching this video, go engage with your community. Encourage someone out there every day. The pandemic has made people comfortable with self-isolation and antisocial behavior, which then turns into neglect, which can breed violence. Just look at how SEPTA has gone to hell this way. Maybe with time, there will be less violence on the trains when communities reconnect.